All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this problem set. So I'm trying to find this limit. Um, but what you notice is that I have to plug in x plus h and I have my x. In this case, I don't have an x to plug in. So when I take the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h, that's actually just 7, minus f of x, which is also just 7, all divided by h. Well, 7 minus 7 is 0, so then my overall limit is actually 0. I know it's a little strange, but that's exactly, you know, when you don't have um, an x to plug in, it's just the number, okay? Let's look at 3. So limit h approaches 0, f of x plus h, so that's 2 times x plus h. Here, I'm going to erase this and start again here because I might run out of room. Limit h approaches 0, um, 2 times x plus h to the quantity squared plus x plus h minus 1. That gives me this first x um, plus h plugged in. Then I need my subtraction of f of x. So that's minus 2x squared plus x minus 1, all divided by h. Okay, so now limit, and you do need to write the limit notation every single time. x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus x plus h minus 1 minus 2x squared minus x plus 1, all divided by h. Okay, so the limit h approaches 0, 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared plus x plus h minus 1 minus 2x squared minus x plus 1. All divided by h. That's a really bad line. Okay. All divided by h. So now what do we get? Uh, my 2x squareds cancel out. My x's cancel out. My 1's cancel out. So I'm left with the limit as h approaches 0. 4xh plus 2h squared and then plus h, all divided by h. Everybody in the numerator has a common h that can be factored out, so I have the limit, h approaches 0, factor out an h, I'm left with 4x plus 2h plus 1, all divided by h, my h's cancel out. So then I'm left with the limit as h approaches 0, 4x plus 2h plus 1. Now there's no denominator, so there's no 0 in the denominator. I can go ahead and plug in 0 in for my h. So I get 4x plus 2 times 0 plus 1, so I get 4x plus 1. Okay? Now let's look at sine. Limit x approaches, oops, not h. Just kidding. H approaches 0. Sine of x plus h minus sine of x, all divided by h. Okay, so a um, couple of things. There is a, there's a couple of limits that you do have to memorize. The first limit is the limit as h approaches 0 of sine of h over h is 1. And there's another limit that you have to just memorize. Limit as h approaches 0 of cosine of h minus 1 over h is 0. Okay? And if you were to look at these, so just memorize them. If you were to look at them in the calculator, you would actually get those values. Um, but um, you just have to memorize them. Okay. Reason why I say that is because we're going to need it here. All right. Limit h approaches 0. And you also will need it for question 6. Okay, so... Um, this is the ad an addition identity for sine. The addition identity for sine is sine of x cosine of h plus cosine of x sine of h minus sine of x all divided by h. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to group my two terms that have sine of x in there. 
So the limit h approaches 0. Sine of x, cosine of h, minus sine of x, all over h. I can also split up my limit, so I'm going to split it up. So I'm going to split up between the ones that have sine of x in there and then the one that doesn't. So I have the limit h approaches 0. And everybody's divided by h. Um, cosine of x, sine of h, all over h. Okay, so now I have a common sine of x. So the limit h approaches 0, sine of x. Cosine of h minus 1 all over h plus the limit h approaches 0 cosine of x. And I'm going to write this as sine of h over h. Okay. And the reason why I do this is because the limit is defined by h has nothing to do with x. So because it has nothing to do with x, I can move it out to the front. So this is the sine of x. Limit as h approaches 0, cosine of h minus 1, all over h, plus cosine of x, limit, h approaches 0, sine of h over h. And then I just told you the two limits that you have to memorize. This guy is 0, and this guy is 1. So what I have is the sine of x times 0 plus the cosine of x times 1. So what do I get? Cosine of x. Okay? All right, so this is it for your problem set. Try this cosine of x one. Just follow the same kind of steps that we did here for problem 5 and try to do it um, for problem 6. Just remember, though, that the cosine has an identity 2, which is the cosine of x, cosine of h minus sine of x sine of h. Okay? And then that's it.